Those of you who follow the Perth US Asia Center will understand that we are very much in the ideas industry. As such, in our efforts to advance Australia's interests in the Indo-Pacific more broadly, we rely very much on our research. It's the lifeblood of our efforts to improve and deepen understanding and cooperation between Australia and its partners in the Indo-Pacific. As such, today, I am absolutely delighted to introduce to you all uh, Sonia Arakal, who is our, our new policy fellow at the Perth USA Centre, has just joined us this week. Uh, and we thought it'd be a wonderful opportunity to get our community to have a better understanding of you and your background. Sonia, before you joined us at the Perth USA Centre, you've had experience uh, in the private sector, in, in, in government. Would you just take just a moment to tell us about the, the career path that has brought you here back to Western Australia and to the Perth USA Centre? Sure, Gordon. Thanks for having me here. I'm really excited to get my teeth into the work um, and the brilliant research you guys do at the Perth US Asia Centre. Before this, I've been working in politics um, at both a state and federal level, and that's included things like supporting uh, federal members in Parliament in Canberra, working on campaigns and during the crazy period that was 2020. Um, I came to politics after management consulting, where I worked for NAUS Group in public policy, again with state and federal clients, um, both here and in Melbourne. And I have had a long-standing interest in foreign policy from my degree at the ANU studying law and politics. And even then I worked uh, part-time for Hawker Britain, which is a political lobbying company. So advising clients on foreign investment in Australia. So one of our favorite phrases in Western Australia is Melbourne's loss is purse gain. So welcome back home. <laughs> We're glad you're here. It's good in that front. Uh, I understand that in addition to your professional work that you have been involved in setting up kind of a, a youth leadership group, I think called Think Forward. Is that correct? Or did I get that right? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Tell us a little bit more about what you've done in that front. So Think Forward is a lobby group that looks at all the things young people don't want to talk about, superannuation, tax, uh, the tax and transfer system, um, and the way that those systems aren't working for young people at the moment. So a few years ago, uh, I co-founded that, and we talk about intergenerational fairness issues. So it's looking at a bigger policy uh, picture of how we can make sure these tax settings aren't leaving the millennial generation behind. Fantastic. Now, one of the issues that you've done some work on in the past, and we anticipate you'll continue to work on, uh, really knows no borders. Uh, uh, even, even COVID can't stop the, the broader concerns that we have around cyber issues, cyber security, uh, cyber crime. Uh, can you can just give us a sense for the work that you've done on cyber and the issues you think that are relevant uh, to us in Western Australia, to us in Australia more broadly, and to the Indo-Pacific in that, that broad and probably less understood realm of, of cyber? Sure. Cybersecurity is fascinating and very closely tied with foreign policy. And in fact, Australia has a lot of collaborations with countries in the Indo-Pacific around this issue, Taiwan, India. Um, and my work in this so far has been primarily around foreign interference and misinformation. In order for Australia to protect itself from the cybersecurity threats it faces, it's important that we build international norms around cybersecurity, around things like attribution, foreign interference, mm -hmm. uh, and that requires working with other democracies, other countries in our region uh, to set the rules of play around cybersecurity and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. So after seven years living in WA, we, we, we've kind of joked for a while that our solution to cybersecurity is that we don't yet have the internet in Western Australia, but we do. Uh, we, we, may, we may chafe at our download speeds, but obviously whether you're in the corporate sector, whether you're in government, within your think tank community like ourselves, uh, these are issues which are, are going to only grow in importance going forward. So we're delighted to have you help us kind of think through what it means, not just for us in Australia, but for our partners in, in again, you, you mentioned election security has real, real ramifications for Indonesia, for India, for, for the other countries in the region. Um, turning to kind of regional relationships, I think you may be aware, we at the center are extremely fortunate that we have former High Commissioner to India and former Foreign Secretary, currently the Chancellor of the University of Queensland, uh, Peter Varghese, as a distinguished fellow at the Perth USA Asia Center. For, for years, uh, he led uh, along with uh, former Foreign Minister Stephen Smith, a member of our board, an annual Perth US Asia Center delegation to India. Last year was the first year in many, which we did not uh, go thanks to COVID. Uh, 
Um, but uh, this April, he's coming out to WA. We're looking forward to having both a, a large public speech with him and several other dialogues. Um, given the fact that Peter had authored several years ago an Australia-India economic strategy, uh, and that at the end of this past year, we had an Indian counterpart done by a former ambassador, Anil Wadwa, in India-Australia economic strategy. I'm curious as to how you view the lay of the land in Australia-India relations, uh, where your interests lie, where you think we ought to be moving uh, on that relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very exciting time to be talking about the India-Australia relationship. And it feels like all we have been doing is talking about it for the last decade or so. But I think with the Peter Verghese report, we've seen a real roadmap. Um, and since that report was released, there's been three huge developments. Um, as you just mentioned, we've had the Indian response to the report. Um, we've also had India's recommitment to our relationship through the Quad. And now the post-COVID strategic environment has put trade relations with India back on the radar. So we've got all the pieces. Uh, we've done the hard work in terms of the research and the evidence on both sides. So we've reached a point now where it's about bringing these ideas and relationships to life in a way that has real benefits for both countries economically, socially um, and strategically. So again, I've already made Melbourne WA kind of jokes. Uh, we in, in Perth have kind of been a, in a bubble within a bubble for the last year, uh, which has had its benefits, but also some, some disconnectivity. Um, we're happy that you're back here in, in, in Perth. I think we have, um, as an institution, over the last seven years as we have grown, we have counted on uh, individuals such as yourself who decided that they want to go off and, and gain experience uh, then realize how good we've got it here in terms of a quality of life to come back home and help us build the institution here. But I'm curious about your own interests. Uh, back in WA, now at the Perth USA Asia Center, what, what, what uh, are you looking forward to uh, in, in terms of your now application of your private sector and your, your governor experience into this policy slash think tank environment? I'm hoping to bring a real interdisciplinary approach to thinking about foreign policy in a way that makes it really practical for the people we advise, the audiences we talk to, to understand why understanding Australia's place in Asia and in the region is important to their day-to-day -day life. And for me, that looks like things, whether it's cybersecurity or how technology is changing the foreign policy space, even social movements. Um, just this year, we've seen Myanmar, Hong Kong, Thailand. Um, all of these uh, public policy, not necessarily foreign policy, events are important to understanding how we engage in the global context within which Australia is trading, is forming strategic relationships with, and is as a you know, friend on the world stage. Well, look, Sonia's only been in the office for two days, her second day on the job, uh, but you can see why we're so excited to have her join our team as a policy fellow. Uh, the Perth US Asia Center has a, an ambitious agenda through the rest of 2021 and beyond. Uh, and we're delighted to introduce to all of you, Sonia, and we hope that you will engage her as she uh, puts out research reports and joins us for our vibrant programming going forward. Thank you again.